We're going to begin the um, regular council meeting, City of Twinsburg, Tuesday, April 24th, 2018, 7.38 p.m., Twinsburg Government Center. Shannon, please call the roll. Mrs. Stoffer? Here. Mr. Steele? Here. Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Scafidi? Here. Ms. McFerrin? Here. Mr. Bellin? Here. Mr. Fury? Here. Please join us for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance led by Ms. McFerrin. Father, we ask for guidance and direction in all city matters before us tonight. We give thanks to be able to be together. Let us continue to strive to make our community a better place. Help us to work together and may we give our best always. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I need approval of the minutes from April 10th, 2018. Any changes? Okay, minutes stand as written. We have any award, no awards or presentations. Any audience participation? Yes. First, we have Bob Thews. Uh, good evening, Bob Thews, 2229 Demi Drive in uh, Meadowood Plan. Um, um, I didn't get a chance uh, last time. I spoke at the last meeting and I really didn't get a chance to rebut some of the things that were said uh, concerning the, that banquet hall uh, uh, since you all went into executive session. Um, but I'd like to take a moment now and, and, and express some thoughts. First, I, I want to make it clear, and I think it was emphasized by both of the people who responded, um, that we, we wish nothing but the best for this thing. Uh, some people think it's a really great idea and long overdue, and, and, uh, and some know failure means that we're going to end up paying more taxes in, in the long run. Either way, it's in our best interest uh, for this, this place to succeed. And, and really, I, I agree uh, uh, quite a bit with what the, the mayor was expression on that about some caution and concern. I did express a potential negative portion of it. Uh, because it, it, it could be successful, okay, very successful, but it also could be a money pit. So, uh, you know, I'm a little more conservative on that side. But, but, I, don't dis uh, but I don't agree uh, about the statement that was made that we are not in debt because we're only paying the interest until we bond it. Uh, you know, uh, bond is debt, period. It, it's. Uh, 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 you, you purchase the clubhouse, you have that debt. It's, uh, the only thing you do with bonding is you just stretch it out over a period of time and you add interest to it. So it no longer becomes the 6.1 something, 138 million or plus whatever's added. It now becomes that plus the interest uh, added onto it. So uh, I'm not playing any finance games and, and I don't think that should be, be done here either. Uh, there is going to be interest if you bond this, and the interest is going to be, uh, be uh, you know, uh, substantial. It's going to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure. And and I, you know, I I I know that the mayor went through this just briefly at the finance meeting. I did not get to the whole finance meeting, and I know he has spent a lot of time analyzing it and trying to put in a perspective. But as as he said, and as many other people said, it's a situation here that it's. It's up for grabs. We, we all hope that, it's, that, that he is very, very conservative on his numbers and everything works out. Um, there was one, you know, one thing I would, did with that, with that whole presentation. I was trying to make an example of the 400 people's taxes to pay for the top five people. Uh, that, that's real. That's a real cost, whether it comes out of the pure tax monies or profit out of the business. So the, the more top level people you add, and, and, I'm, and I'm speaking from experience, you expose more opportunity for failure for the business. I, I, I think I got a little bit of that at that, at that meeting here. That, uh, but I, I can tell you, I spent 25 years in the business world. And, and my uh, the la or last 25 years, I spent fixing organizations that were going under. 
That's, that was my job. And the vast majority of them did exactly the wrong thing, which was hire a lot of people up front, okay, to, uh, to make it look good, and then you, you can't get rid of those, those bills. They go on forever and ever. So what I'm saying is that, that uh, uh, and I think I, think I, I got uh, the gist of that at the meeting, that, that you're, you're going to be cautious in who you bring on, and I think that's the only way that, that you, you can be. Now, uh, why, why would this be a concern at all? Why should we be discussing this except for one fact, and that is, I, and I made a mistake last week. I said we we're going into debt by $4 million every year since 2014. Well, that's, that's not true. What, I'm, what I really should have said is we are spending $4 million more than we have coming in every year since, since 2014. So uh, the thing of it is, is we are already on a, on a tendency. Now, I know the mayor went, <laughs> went kind of crazy last year trying to get costs cut down. One minute. And he still only got it down to $3, minute, uh, down to three million. So uh, and we're, this is only going to last until the reserve runs out, and it's down to about $10 million. So. Uh, I would say at this particular point in time, uh, you you got to eliminate, you got to minimize the people, and as you go through this process, and I th I think uh, hopefully that's the process, or you're, you're going to have to get a raise in taxes, and that's not a good thought right now in this community. Everybody's up in arms about the community. So the other thing, one one more thing, and I'm done. The 47 people, um, part-time employees I mentioned, came directly from this meeting. I didn't bring it up. I didn't have that. I didn't create that number. It was brought up by HR in this meeting. So uh, if that's changed, that's great. If it's a lot less than that, that that's fine. So, um, uh, And then the only other thing I have to say is uh, uh, really this, some other discussion sometime is the ethics of running a business from the, from the government side. I still have some problems with that. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Next, we have Mr. Baldwin. Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Council Bruce Baldwin, 3310 Cannon Road. Happy New Year to everybody. I haven't seen you this year. I really want to take my hats off to the, the, city, the, the people who work for the city for this cleanup we had last year. They'll probably all quit and be weightlifters after that, I guess. But this is a really <laughs> a beautiful job. And I'd like to know, uh, I, w I really wonder about Depot Street. It'll be two years this summer that road is repaved. It did a nice job. But there's never been any yellow lines or fog lines on the road. There, there's no way to tell where the middle of that road is going on two years this summer. And the funny thing, somebody, somebody took the speed limit sign down last April. Don't ask me how I remember that, but the speed limit sign was taken down, which was a 25 mile an hour zone. There is no sign. And this weekend, between Saturday night and Sunday night, somebody stole the pole. The pole's gone that held the <laughs> sign. And don't ask me how I know. I know it's kind of weird. I know, but anyway, it it's, it it doesn't make any sense to me. Why? That, how can that go that long without lines? Fog lines to me are one of the best things in the world to have in, in bad weather to see where you're going. You know. Uh, another thing, it's been over two years. There's three wires sticking out right by the roundabout, sticking out of the ground, been there for three years now. Did anybody have any idea what those, I did see a squirrel going across, but I don't think they were put there for that. I did see <laughs> a kid go across. You made it. You made it. But I don't understand what those wires, does anybody know what these wire, those wires are for? We, we removed uh, hawk signals. So you're talking about the bolts and the wires coming up? Or the, the wires, wires are coming up out of the ground, straight out of the ground. He's talking CBS. about windstream. Those are windstream wires. Yeah, wind we've, been, yeah. we've been pushing them really hard to I mean, see, if, fix I, I that. I hate to think of a car hitting that. Oh. Mm -hmm. it is my concern is somebody, but they've been there for what two years now. Is not is, is anything going to be done? I mean, they're going to yeah. We're working. On it. We're 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 pushing windstream as, as hard as we can to get that project done. So oh, I see. Okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, who paid to have the red light? The red lights were put up and then taken down. Is that responsibility of the city? But they didn't. You talking about the, the hawk signals at the roundabout? Uh, the, the red lights on the yeah. top. They're down. They weren't red. The they overhead. Were, yeah. The over. The over. I'm sorry. The, those those at, were red lights, right? Or at, no, they weren't. At the roundabout. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about at the roundabout? Yes. Yeah. He's. Those were. Yeah. Those were hawk signals. Those were for pedestrian crossings. And so when we reevaluated that roundabout, um, those hawk, we still have those hawk signals, and we're going to repurpose those hawk signals. So those, yeah, those were paid for during the project. Um, it ca we came to the conclusion they weren't necessary um, to have there in terms of legally. And so 
to try to create a more, I guess, less busy visual um, of the roundabout, we remove those hawk signals. I thought those were red lights. Or something. They were never red lights. They were going to be caution lights for pedestrian crossing. Now, I'll tell you, it's really getting bad, but the bridge headers by Tapers Creek, where you hit the, when the road turns it called the headers, that and 480, both those are really bad. Somebody's going to pop a tie rod in down their money tonight. It's really bad. And then, oh my gosh, uh, I'd like to see the last thing I'm getting out of here. I know you're happy about that. But I, it's, uh, I'd like to see more things put in the Twinsburg Bowl. I don't think a lot of people in the city realize what the police and the, uh, the whole safety committee has up against here. I mean, I see these these people, I don't know who, who would want a job like that. I mean, to police and fire, I don't think a lot of people realize what we're up against. We see more of this in the Bolton of what they're, what they're doing here. I see a few things about a DUI, and I understand that. That's mm -hmm. good. I understand that, you know. Is there any way we can put stuff more in the bowl and let people understand that this police and fire is not an easy job? And these people are up against some problems here. <laughs> okay, thank you very okay. much. Good evening. Thank, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Next, we have Chuck Bonacci. Good evening, Council, Good Mayor, evening. Law Director, ladies, audience, folks watching at home and streaming on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's a glorious night to be in front of this group to report out on how well our Earth Day event went. This year, Earth Day would be our fourth Earth Day, and we've come a long way from the lobby of the rec center. And, uh, and the commission worked really hard, and a lot of other folks worked really hard to put on a top-notch event. And we had the record attendance for the year at Liberty Park with one event that might pass us a little bit, but I doubt it because that was the busiest I've seen that park. And last year was their second busiest year, and we don't have an eclipse coming to pass us. So we had great attendance. We had great activities from we little kids all the way to stuff that folks like I could learn and trees that we gave away and all kinds of other good things. Uh, we had great participation from our commissioners and I want to recognize Daisy who's been on the Environmental Commission for for a while and she's, <laughs> this thing. and she's she's challenged us to make events better and better and better every year so this year our big push was to expand Earth Day beyond one day so we had a presentation on ethical agriculture which was life-changing for me and then we had the Earth Day event starting at the park and highlights of the event we gave away 150 trees we had hundreds of people attend. We had folks getting recognized with flags that flew over uh, the House of Representatives. We had uh, participation from youth that we have never had before. The teachers and the teachers union helped us engage parts of the curriculum to create art projects and science projects and essays and poems. We had a beautiful poetry walk. We had a band from the high school, the Whims, great, great music. They played one of my favorite songs and it was glorious. Mm -hmm. This was an amazing Earth Day. The beauty is this year we had Cable 9 coverage, so Earth Day is going to live on in infamy on their website and broadcast through their network. So you'll see, if you didn't have a chance to come out to Earth Day and see what we had and to learn a little bit about being better stewards of the environment, recycling, um, all kinds of good stuff, you'll be able to watch it at home or on the internet want to thank the library, the Tinkers Creek Watershed, our service department, our recreation department, the other environmental commissioners, uh, the WIMS, the Friends of Twinsburg Park that paid for the WIMS, that was the band, and I'm going to forget somebody because I didn't write any of this down, but it was, it was the most awesome event that we've had. Our naturalist Stanley Stein led two walks, uh, the Boy Scouts were there, uh, the Boy Scouts have a, an Eagle Scout project where they're giving away rain barrels and installing rain barrels on, on homes, folks in Twinsburg. Um, he met his quota. He's going to get his Eagle Scout badge. And folks are going to be able to divert water from the storm system, less flooding, less overpowering of the storm sewers, more gardening, all good stuff. Moving forward, the Environmental Commission will meet on May 1st. We encourage all in residents that have concerns and, and want to get involved to come see what we're doing. Uh, maybe challenge us to do more things. In the fall, we're going to do document shredding and some other community cleanup events. 
and uh, hopefully that'll they'll all be successful. So I, I really can't thank the city enough for allowing us to do it because it was a fair amount of work, but mm -hmm. a lot of fun once it was happening. Mm -hmm. And the folks that came there stayed there for hours at the park. And usually they're there, they walk around, they see the ledges and they go home. So it was a great event for everyone. Thanks. Are you still thank a vegetarian, you. Chuck? Uh, yes, eat meat. All right, uh, just so checking. Uh, I, I don't know how much longer. But that's, a, that's a long discussion, I know, I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Sheila Williams. everyone. This has been a busy evening with people talking. <laughs> like it. Um, I had the pleasure of going to the City of Akron's cow meeting for Tobacco 21. Um, I went as a board member. There were several community people that have been pushing it and being involved with it. And I had made a promise to the director I was not going to speak. But they pissed me off a little bit so I had to get up. <laughs> In the conversation, um, I brought some more information, and I'm back now to really talk about this and to see if we can set up a time where Corey and Tanya can come out and really talk to council and the mayor and bias being videotape residents to see what this is all about. The bigger concern that I had that made me speak was everyone was concentrating on the tobacco. And the tobacco is an issue, but the vapors are the bigger issue. And it's a predatory process, and, and that's what I got up and said to them. Um, these stores are preying on young adults, 18 and under, and these things are flavored. Fruit Loops, um, lemon, cherry. So they're not targeting 21-year-olds or older that they've identified a market that they can get an 18 year old to buy. A 21 year old is not gonna be, uh, what's the word? They're not gonna be at much in helping a 15 year old because they have more to lose. An 18 year old is only one year removed and they think it's funny or they think it's cool or, or, or they have their own genius, whatever the case may be. And, um, and I think that as we look at this, we are a family-oriented community. And if you talk with the superintendent and if she talks honestly, they are having problems in the schools with these vapors. They look like junk drives. A lot of parents might not know what they look like. I see Greg shaking his head, yeah. And it, it's very disturbing. We can just focus in on the tobacco and say, well, you know, I don't want to take away anyone's rights. And that's what made me get up at um, Akron's council about it. And Tanya Block, who's the assistant director of Summit County Public Health and a Twinsburg resident, uh, I encouraged her to come out tonight to the meeting to show how our meetings are so different. And I just want to tell you guys, I know I have disagreements with you, but after being in Akron, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I do love you guys. Um, and, and you know, so I would like to know if Shannon can get in touch with me, or Morgan can get in touch with me, or Donna, um, the director, or Tanya, for us to set up a time for Corey and Tanya to come out and really give us a presentation, a formal presentation on this. Because I think it's important, if we look 5, 10, 15 years out, the impact of the medical side of the vapors is a bigger concern because it's not FDA regulated. Um, we really don't know what it's gonna look like. Here we are 50 years later with cigarettes and we know what it looks like. It's targeted towards the least among us, if the truth is told. People may not wanna say that, but I, I'll say that. It's a predatory process. And um, I'd like to see us be a part of effective change. It's not uh, for me, but it's for my grandchildren, it's for your children. Um, and to give them an opportunity. So I have this information. I, I know Shannon passed it out. Yes. Ms. Wilm, I think we're in the process of already drafting legislation. I've seen the list of stores. I've seen, I mean, we're, this is, I, I expected this to be on the docket well, tonight. It's a very, yeah, I think council and myself very much support moving forward. Um, so we're, it's already in the works. You're welcome to have anyone come out and talk to us. 
Um, okay, because I think that would help you too to see that you're doing the right thing. I mean, you know, I want to thank you for that. And the, it's a difference I found out that the townships have to wait till the county approves it before they can draft, draft legislation. So I was talking with um, Sam this morning over in Reminderville. And um, he says he's waiting to see what the county's going to do because he can't do anything until the county does something because of it being a township. I thought we had 10 locations that sold vapors yeah, or, I mean, or cigarettes or <laughs> chewing tobacco, snuff, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, well, Corey coming out might help us also because he really aligned the language that we're working with. And Tanya, please interject if I'm saying it wrong. Um, he aligned the language with Columbus, and they were the first to do it. And the tobacco company wasn't as big a problem, the, the people that sell, sell the tobacco, as it was them fussing about the vapors. The vapor people came out in Columbus, mm -hmm. and um, they still were able to forge a hit. So I really would like for you to see how much work and time they put into it and, and why you know, we're trying to do this. But I, I want to say thank you to you that you heard me. I do appreciate that. Then the second thing I want to talk about quickly is um, Real Gospel Church right here on Ravenna Road. They do the Thanksgiving at the community center dinner with partnerships and different things. They're having a uh, access to health fair on Saturday, May 5th from 10 to 2. And um, they're going to be doing um, blood pressure checks. They're going to have a pharmacist there. They're telling people, bring your medication. The pharmacist can talk to you. They're going to be talking about um, dietary needs with a dietitian. It's a full day of activities for the community. Uh, there's a food stamp sign up and I guess some other outreach things. And I was there the other day and I picked this up and I said, you know what, I'm going to bring this down here because this is something that all of our residents could maybe benefit from, get some information that maybe it would make their life a little bit better. And then in closing, I want to talk about 91. I'm going to do like this when I talk about 91. As you tear up my backyard, um, I, it would be so, so nice if they just take down all the trees. And I'm going to keep asking that because they, they're cherry picking trees. And what's going to happen is the ones that they leave behind will end up dying on us. And it would be easier for us to do what we need to do back there if when they push that bulldozer, if they would just take them all down. Because half of them are dead anyway. And take them out of their misery. Um, and could somebody please tell me what, what's going to happen next, this summer? They've already torn the path of the backyard. Yeah, right now we're, they're doing utility work. So okay. that's so it's that's still primarily. utilities yeah. coming on. Yeah, okay. utility work. So we can set up a meeting um, and take a look at the areas you're talking about. So we can help you with that. That would be a yeah. wonderful thing. Because I'd like four of those big ledge stones, so when the cars want to jump off the, the road on 91, we have four houses, so if we have four big bricks, we can mm. slow them down. We could probably do that. <laughs> that would be a wonderful mm. thing. I'm we have them in spit. That we, we have them uh, sitting around. We can. Yeah. Mm. Well, we can I'm going to hold you personally to that. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I needed an action item. We'll become BFFs behind that. That's, a, that's all right. You know, they got my my friend Scott and I will we'll try to get those rocks right yes. out there. Well, Scott's going to meet all the crew tomorrow. That's right. Thank you so much. And uh, should I call Morgan to set up an appointment? For, yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, just contact Morgan, and we'll we'll meet, and I'll pull Amy in, and we'll, we'll take a look. No, 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 I'm talking there. about for the tobacco. Oh, for right. the tobacco, yeah, just, well, oh, I'll Shannon. contact Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. Okay. I'll contact call Shannon. This weekend okay. Put four of them out there. Okay. okay. Thank you okay. so much. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any? We have one more. One more. Daisy Walker. Daisy Walker. And I won't be long. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Mr. Maestro, Mr. Farm, Mr. Bella, Mr. Theron, Stoffer, Mr. Scafidi, Mr. Seal, Mr. Fury, and staff. And I just want to piggyback on what Chuck said, you know, special thanks to the ones behind the scene. Chuck gave you the ones that were a part of the scene, and these are the ones that helped make the Earth Day such an, another successful event. Mm -hmm. Mayor Yates came, uh, you know, he, did, he tried his best to get there, but he had another I engagement. Late. I was really glad to see you and your wife, so, and council came. 
a special thanks to Morgan, who has done a lot behind the scenes, and Shannon. Public Works, Chris Campbell, Kenny Drew, and Bobby Park. Bobby, uh, they're the ones who worked on the signs, brought the bags, brought the garbage bags, assembled everything. Derek Schroeder and Ryan with the signs and putting them out. Lynn Muter, Metro Parks, Twinsburg Bulletin put a, a free ad in. Twinsburg Tribune put another free ad in for us, another shout out. The Environmental Commissioners, the Earth Day Committee, volunteers, participants, and attendees. And without them, we would not <coughs> have been able to accomplish this uh, event in such a great manner that it came to be. And also, um, I just want to end with that there are so many ways to applaud public servants in the city of Twinsburg. For many years, this man has worked so diligently on behalf of the city and his ward. On Saturday, April 21st, 2018, Councilman Sam Scafidi was presented with a flag flown over the Capitol. Oh also gosh, on Saturday, April 21st, 2018, Mary Yates Council, the Environmental Commission, the Earth Day Committee, Garden Club, Twinsburg Library, Twinsburg School, Eagle Scout, Good Nature Organic Lawn Care, Subaru, Tinkers Creek Watershed Partners, residents and visitors also celebrated Council Sam Scafidi by showcasing the work of a great public servant. And we thank you for your many years of community service and the pride you have in Ward 1. So we all thank you, Sam. Thank you. Continue thank to do the great work. Thank you. Thank you. I wow. Say, <laughs> uh, remark. Um, yeah, that was quite a surprise. Uh, I was at the Earth Day celebration on Saturday, and uh, I was called up there and presented with the flag that flew over the Capitol. And uh, not only was it a surprise, but it was also an honor. And I really, really appreciate it, and I appreciate all your comments as well. Uh, thank you for that. And I, I thank the uh, Chuck Donacci and Daisy Walker and the entire Environmental Commission. And I truly appreciate it. And you guys did a great job. And Chuck, I, I repeat your sentiments and, and your uh, Daisy. It was a great day. The weather cooperated. Everything couldn't have been anything couldn't have been any better. Maybe a few more digits on the thermometer, but other than that, it was a great day. And uh, good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any any other audience participation? There is none. There is none. Okay. So now we're going to move on to council communications and committee reports. Uh, Mr. Barr, do you want to start us off? Well, I was going to start with Earth Day, but I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a whole lot more to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't want to steal Sam's thunder. The campaign, uh, campaign, the finance committee, <laughs> for, the finance uh, committee met before the meeting. We did discuss the golf course um, and its expenditures and uh, its effect on uh, our budget. I will let Councilman Scafidi uh, elaborate on that further. I do want to say thank you again to uh, all the members of the Environmental Commission, uh, several um, members uh, certainly behind the scenes that helped us put together a truly successful Earth Day, uh, specifically uh, Daisy, Chuck, the, the two of you guys, we really couldn't have done it without you, Patrick, Hallie, the whole Earth Day committee, the Twinsburg Garden Club, just they hit it out of the park. Um, if you didn't make it, I encourage you to put it on your to-do list. It is a fun spring event. Uh, I was there long enough to get sunburned. And uh, we, we had a great time. Uh, Councilwoman McFerrin was there. Uh, she and I got to present Councilman Scafidi with the flag, which uh, it was it, it was a it was a really special honor. So uh, it was terrific and, uh, and great to reward him for his service. Uh, the uh, Community Improvement Corporation uh, met. Um, we discussed um, the findings of some asbestos surveys uh, a couple weeks back, or last Tuesday actually. Uh, our next meeting uh, for the CIC is scheduled for May 15th at 5.30 in the jury room here uh, at City Hall. Uh, the, next camp uh, ne campaign. <laughs> the next finance committee meeting will be uh, the May 22nd uh, here in council chambers before council. Um, and finally, I know uh, Mrs. Uh, Walker and Mr. Bonacci mentioned that we are going to be doing a community shredding event which is a very, very popular event the Environmental Committee uh, Commission puts that on. But the, uh, the members of the Ashlar Lodge over on Shepherd Road uh, are going to be doing a community shredding event uh, open to the public uh, April 28th. 
from 9 to noon. Uh, they would just ask that you would make a small donation for that. Uh, it, it is going to Summit County, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to Summit County Special Olympics. So if you are in need of a spring shredding event, um, the, the Masons at the Ashley Lodge and Shepherd will be happy to help you out on the 20th. Um, that is all I have. Councilman, do we have a date for our shredding day? Is there a date yet set? Okay. We are in the process of getting the trucks together and things like that. I know Ms. Walker's reached out to a couple of different uh, companies, and okay. we're trying to nail that down as soon as we have that, though, because that, that's, a, that's a sellout event for the yeah. Environmental Commission, so we'll definitely let you guys know. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bellin? Good evening. Um, earlier this evening, I attended the uh, Finance Committee me meeting uh, where we got an update on uh, the clubhouse, among other things. I will leave it to uh, <coughs> Councilman Scafidi to uh, fill you in further. Um, Ms. Sheila earlier talked about Tobacco 21. I, um, uh, that, that is, uh, that's an initiative that's very near and dear to my heart uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, I um, traded several emails with Corey at um, Summit County Public Health um, as well as um, a couple members of council, as well as Chief Noga. Um, so that's something that I'm very much looking forward to in the future. Um, construction on <laughs> Joanne and Lila Place improvement projects, including Terrace Drive, continues. Uh, we got a construction update actually this morning. Terrace Drive will be closed to today at Croydon Road for pavement repairs. It is anticipated this closure will remain in effect for approximately six weeks. Please drive slowly and carefully. The next uh, Golf Advisory Board meeting will be Tuesday, May 15th, 6.30 p.m. right here in Council Chambers, where I will be swearing in our new Golf Advisory Board members, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, I have had a couple questions just in the last couple days about a parcel of land near the Belmar community, just north of Belmar on 91, right across the street from uh, the concrete facility. Looks like there's, um, I, I haven't, I actually have not been out there, but it looks like they're doing some, um, they placed some stakes and I had several residents ask me about what's going on and those kind of things. Um, I, I can say at this point it's, it is, that parcel is zoned R7 senior residence. Um, there is nothing that is, as far as I know, nothing has been done, nothing has been approved, but anything that will be done or will be approved would go through the um, Planning Commission as well as the Architectural Review Board. Um, and then the only other thing is um, opening day for Twinsburg Baseball League will be this Saturday, April 28th. And so I will be there coaching one team and watching another one. So I, uh, I imagine the mayor might, might uh, mention that as well. That's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Okay, next we have Ms. McFerrin. Well, as you know already, I was at the environmental um, Earth Day on Saturday and it was a great event. Um, great to see neighbors and friends out. Um, the Friends of Twinsburg Parks was there, and the big thing right now is a membership drive, and there'll be another meeting for anyone who's interested in knowing more about the Friends of Twinsburg um, the next month. Um, I attended the Finance Committee meeting today, as well as the Community Improvement Corporation meeting. Um, the next meeting of the Parks and Rec will be this Thursday, and uh, the Community Relations meeting will be June 21st. Do you know when this next safety meeting is? We have not, we don't have one scheduled that I know. We haven't. It was supposed to be tonight, but we because of flopped the it to get finance in. Right, so we'll need to reschedule, right. reschedule another meeting. Did we have anything on the agenda for that? So we'll have to talk and schedule something for that. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have uh, the planning commission met on April 16th. There was a there were a couple of rezoning requests for property. Uh, one was at ones at the southwest corner of Aurora Road in Chamberlain. The owner of that property would like to uh, be rezoned from commercial to resi residential C2 to R5. The vote from planning ended in a tie. So what that means is that there will no, they, they're not going to be recommending it to council, but it's still going to go through the process. So they're going to have a public hearing, and then after the public hearing, it will come to council for a vote. As a motion or as a resolution? Yes. The, when it comes out of planning commission, it'll come to council because it, 
would be have it would have to be legislation because it'd have to go on the ballot Thank you. if it's approved. That's what, so. so it'll be a resolution at it, some point. We're just not sure when. I think the timing is the May meeting. I mean, this will be the third time it's been before planning commission is the problem. Right. The first two times it's been voted two two ties both times. So this will be the third, if not the fourth time. I think it's right. been in front of planning. So is there a reason we still having four people show up for planning? Is there an illness or we probably yeah no oh, I don't know yeah I don't know okay. It hasn't been the same person, I can tell you that, that's been missing. So it's been di different meetings. Mm -hmm. There was another um, zoning issue that was there that Planning Commission did, did recommend, and that was uh, the property on Ravenna Road, and I believe it's over by uh, the Taste of Europe, well, it used to be the Taste of Europe, now it's Bongiorno's, is it Bongiorno's? Bongiorno's, that, that uh, property there. But they would like that change from R3 to C2, and Planning Commission did recommend that. So that will eventually that come to sense. us down the pike. Right, and then uh, there was a, a concept site plan that was presented for some senior apartments at 9422 Darrow Road. So I'm thinking yeah. that's the area that you may be referring to. That is the area. Yeah, and it was just a conceptual plan at this point, so they'll be talking more about that at the next meeting. Well, the next time they bring it up. The next planning commission meeting is May 7th, uh, if there's something on the agenda. I did attend the Friends of the Park meeting, and that was something. There were, um, those people are really working hard, and I'm really grateful for the time Deb Peltz is organizing this group, and uh, they're really working on ideas and getting together. Joanne, do you know when the next meeting is for that? It's, um, the next month. Did you say? But for those people, are, um, if anybody would like to get involved, that's a really nice group of people working hard. I believe they're working closely with the Environmental Commission as well. So that's all I have. Mr. Scafidi. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. A um, couple things I have. The Board of Zoning Appeals met uh, last week, and we had a um, one appeal number three on the agenda, which was a resident on Chamberlain looking to um, uh, propose a garage extension. Right now they have a two-car garage and they want to put on a, a third garage, third-car garage. Um, specifically, specifically, they're looking for a three-foot, six-inch side setback and a 30-square-foot variance uh, from the code. And so that went through the, the board and they approved that 4-0, so uh, they got their variance. There is no need to wait the 30 days, the day up time, so we don't need to do that. Uh, the next meeting of the VZA will be tomorrow night at 6.30 right here in the council chambers. Um, charter review. Charter review met two weeks ago. They had their first meeting, swore in all the members there, and those folks uh, set up their, their uh, agenda, and they went right to work that night. Um, they, uh, and then we had a, a meeting last week again, so they're going to be meeting every Thursday at 6 o'clock right here in the council chambers. Uh, in those two meetings, they, uh, they've already gone through uh, the beginning of the charter and then through council and all the way through the mayor's section. So they're going to be taking probably meeting for about an hour and a half or so every Thursday until they get through the entire charter. And, and right now they, they've got a pretty good jump on it. So they're doing very well. So again, the next meeting for Charter View will be this thir Thursday, uh, 6 o'clock right here in council chambers. Um, as been mentioned earlier, the uh, Finance Committee, uh, Committee met earlier this evening. And um, Sarah gave us a, uh, a presentation on the first quarter of 2018 budget highlights, and uh, it was pretty detailed. She did a great job at that. We appreciate that. Then we had a pretty detailed uh, presentation from the mayor on the uh, the golf the clubhouse up at the golf course, and um, went through. We covered quite a bit of information. Um, I'm not going to repeat it all here, but uh, I mean it was really enlightening, and and he brought council up to date. On, uh, on the whole uh, the whole project so uh, that was a good meeting out of that meeting um, I need to make a motion that uh, we uh, and I'm going to make that right now I'd like to make a motion that we add the tables and chairs as well as the uh, kitchen smallware to the two to the bid list for this year the 2018 bid list I'll second I'll second. second mr. Fury second any discussion uh, discussion. Yeah, this is so as we, we've gone through and we've purchased um, certain things to get the clubhouse open. Um, some of these are, and we're, we're going to be talking to the auditor to, I guess, find out more specific direction. Um, but some of these items uh, on how they're grouped and how we purchase them are going to be over that $50,000 threshold. So we just want to make sure we're doing it right. 
Um, there's no issues with it. So we ask that council uh, approve this so it can go on the bid list if we don't need to because of some exemption or something in the way that they're looking at the particular project and we just we don't need it. But I'd like to have it there because there are some lead time on a lot of the stuff and I want to make sure we don't uh, we can order stuff and, and move as quick as we can. Okay. Anybody else have any discussion on that? Call the roll, please. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Okay, great. Next uh, Finance Committee meeting will be on May 22nd at 6 o'clock right here in the Council Chambers. One thing in Ward 1 I would like to mention that um, the road program for this year, and I've been hesitant to put it out there until I thought it was pretty well uh, finalized, but there's going to be four streets. Um, I've heard from several residents in these areas and and the streets are due for um, for repair and reconstruction and we finally got it uh, we've been waiting and waiting and I've been in touch with the residents they wanted it last year we tried to get it in there and we had other areas that needed to be done <coughs> up in uh, Councilman Stauffer's ward so we put it all off so we could do it at one time so the streets of Briardale, Bel Belfair, Serene Court and Ridgeway between Glenwood and Serene will be done this year they will be reconstructed and um, you know we're going to have uh, new streets there and I think that for the most part Ward 1 will be pretty well taken care of with the exception of a few areas that maybe need some mill and filling uh, just some re-asphalting so milling off the old asphalt and putting down the new um, but that'll take place uh, in the next budget whether it be next year or the year after but uh, in the meantime I know there's a few issues there that are going out there I've heard some from some residents and uh, rest assured that the service department will be out there to take care of these uh, small areas uh, that are in need of attention right now but for the most part I think Ward 1 has a uh, we're, we're pretty well set with our streets in the, in the city um, other than that that's all I have thank you Sam thank you report. thank you Mr. Steele the ARB met. Um, they approved new signs for Wendy's. Uh, basically, they're all the signs are going back in the same place, uh, but they're changing some of the colors on it. The lettering is going from red to white, a different style of lettering. Uh, they approved a new front porch for a house on Sharonbrook, uh, a pavilion for a house on uh, Sandalwood, a uh, new pole barn uh, on Connaughton Avenue. And then the last one was a uh, the demolition of a single family home on 91. Uh, this is the house that's down next to the old uh, was a Great Lakes the, the trucking company on the south side. Uh, it's a shame. It's a, it's a according to what I was said was said at the meeting. It's a couple hundred years old, but it's falling apart. It's um, got a tree laying on it also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, but things, it is but a shame that we're losing some of our older houses. Um, and they also the did big the, tree. the big tree. It's a huge tree. <laughs> um, and that was it for the ARB. Uh, we are working the Volunteer Firemen's Board, and we are working at coming in with the uh, paperwork and the uh, process to make sure that the claims, if something happens to one of our volunteer firemen, uh, gets handled. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Fury. Thank you. Uh, I also attended the CIC meeting on April 17th, and as Mr. Barr stated, the next meeting will be May 15th at 5:30 in the jury room. I also was here for the finance meeting, where Mayor Yates did a fantastic job of outlining the business plan to make the uh, clubhouse profitable. So, I feel very confident with his numbers. Thought they were conservative. And that's all I have right now. Thank you. And I have waiting for Sue Bacalasis to get back to me on when the when the uh, Friends of the Love Park uh, next meeting is oh, May 16th because they May switched 16th? it to from they changed the locations last time. Uh, oh. So on the website is May 16th, uh, which is a Wednesday, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, at Brewster's, which is 2681 Creekside Drive. All right, thank According you. According to the website. <coughs> I was talking to Russian, or I talked to Deb Pelt the other day, and she's, I believe, moving it there permanently, but okay. I'd wait to see it come up there. Okay. Yeah. It's also I, ju I, just got, well. I just got her response, and oh, look at that. I concur. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. She, does, go. she does an amazing she job. Where? Mm -hmm. It's uh, Right now it's on for scheduled for May 16th, 8 p.m. at Brewster's. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, Mayor? 
<laughs> thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to thank thank council for their their patience and and just for all of them attending our, our finance meeting. Um, uh, we spent a lot of time going through the clubhouse and the numbers and our projections, and uh, you know we were <coughs> we've put everything on paper, and I was able to do a presentation of them. Um, and you know, thank Mr. Thews. I mean, I'm excited too. Hopefully, we're all hoping it's going to be a success. Um, you know, a couple of things. I, I don't know that anyone else has ever said we, we don't have debt. We definitely have debt. We have $6.2 million in debt for this project. Um, we have uh, short-term bans right now, bond anticipation notes. Um, right now, the interest rate on those are better than, than converting that to the long-term um, to long-term bond. So um, we're going to ride that out on a year-by-year -year basis and convert it when we think it's appropriate and the best, you know, for the best interest rate. Um, but we, we are doing a lot of projections and, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of things and we're trying to get this project finished. Uh, we're pushing the contractors as, uh, as much as we can. Um, I know staffing is always an issue and that was brought up also. Um, the 47 number of part-timers um, is not what we need to run the facility. So, you know, if you've been in the restaurant business and I've learned way more than I ever wanted to know about the restaurant business, but if I, get, if I need three servers on 11 hours a day, I gotta hire 15 of them to make sure that those shifts are covered. So we're going through all that. We have we have people doing that. But um, again, hopefully what I shared was, um, and I know it's a lot more information than council's got, but hopefully it's something that, um, you know, I, I'm as scared as you are, but hopefully it's something that we can work toward and, and we're successful when we get this thing, gets this thing open. Um, things that have been going on, um, you know, one thing back to the clubhouse. So. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, there's been a lot of information flying around. Um, I did an interview with Channel 19, and we went from, you know, a five, six, seven million to a $10 million project on that interview. Um, somehow I got misquoted in the Twinsburg Magazine that came out, and it turned into a $20 million project. <laughs> um, this is not a $20 million project. Um, this is not a $10 million project. Um, so what I think Channel 19 did um, and the media never does this, but um, kind of bunched up a lot of the work we've done over the last five or six years on the course itself. Um, you know, and I think it's important, I mentioned it during my, my presentation, is that, you know, we have probably a $5 million clubhouse. We have a seven, $7 million plus project. Um, two million is in the parking lot and site and soil work and removing an old building, a lot of different things. But, um, you know, and then we have a lot of things that have to go inside it, but um, we've done, significant work on the course we've changed cart paths we probably have the top practice facility in northeast ohio um, and a lot of these things you know really work to complement i think the investment we're making in that clubhouse i mean we have a course we can be proud of we have a practice facility we can be proud of and it's getting a lot of, of talk um, and interest uh, around uh, this area so hopefully Mr. Thews, we, we have a successful project and I'll, I'll buy you a beer one day and, and you can, you know, we can all celebrate together. I won't drink, but I'll let you drink mine too. I'll buy you beer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, so anyway, so I just wanted to mention that, that it's, it's, not, it's not a $20 million project, it's not a $10 million project. Um, and we're doing everything we can to try to minimize the cost we have, but um, it's a big endeavor, so. All right, moving on. Um, I did attend uh, a three-chamber luncheon recently, and we had a really good presentation on and the uh, opioid epidemic. And you know, this is something that is still out there. It's not going away. Um, it's kind of lost um, a lot of its media attention, but it's it's still there. And so, um, you know, there are different hospitals. This was a presentation by UH. You know, I think everyone's trying to get. Um, even a church that, that I, I belong to are raising funds right now. We've acquired property. We're trying to do a full care facility to bring people from uh, the starting of, of um, getting them off a of substance to getting them back into the workforce. So, I mean, there's a lot of work still going on behind the scenes for this, and this was a, a good presentation to really kind of remind the people that, you know, don't forget about, you know, what, what our society is going through. And it's not just in this area. It's, it's all over the country. So. Um, other things happening, um, our community gardens will be opening up soon. I had a really good meeting with some of our long-term gardeners there, and I think we've kind of worked out some of the, um, the challenges that they have uh, in terms of how we prepare the soil for them and different things. So it was a really good meeting. Hopefully this year our timing 
it's not necessarily what we do, it's more of the timing of when we do it um, to make their life a little bit easier when they get in there and, and want to start working that soil. So we had a really good meeting and um, I think we're looking at getting it open uh, for Labor Day weekend. Um, not Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Labor Day will be a little, a little late. So. Um, uh, another event I went to um, was Coffee for a Cause. And this was uh, done by high school students doing performances all evening to raise money uh, for a charity that they, they do every year. Um, but it's a great event. I mean, it's, it's well attended by parents and kids. And um, it's just a whole assortment of, of live acts of, of high school students. So um, if you haven't been to it, I encourage you next year to, to go. Um, we did have a, a post-renewal uh, health care meeting. So again, we are still constantly watching what we do um, with our health care, making sure that we're trying to manage our claims, keep those costs low. We had a couple of really good years. We want to make sure we continue to do that. Um, our claims are up a little bit right now. Um, generally on our PPO side, our HSA is performing uh, really well. Um, and so we will continue to um, look at different options. We're really doing an analysis on uh, becoming self-insured. Um, had we been self-insured the last three years, we would have saved uh, additional money. So we're trending toward becoming self-insured. Um, I'm learning a lot about different new um, models in the healthcare industry in terms of um, primary care. So there's different things that we're exploring uh, for for employees. So, but I'll keep you up to date as that as that happens. Um, Earth Day uh, was a great event. Um, I was late. I was at a track meet in Amherst um, with my son, but um, I showed up and there was cars parked along the street all the way to Liberty Road at you know two o'clock when I got there. So um, they were carting people with golf carts up and down. So uh, you rarely see that many cars there, um, and it was great. It was tons of kids and families and the band that played. Um, uh, it was just. It was a really, it was a really fun event. It was a very family-oriented event, and I think uh, the committee that got involved and the teachers and the environmental commission just all did a did a great job. So thanks for that. Um, uh, today I actually attended the the CVCC. Um, there was an annual luncheon they do. Um, it's great to get out and see what um, uh, they provide our students uh, in terms of the ed educational opportunities outside of that traditional. Um, college path. Um, it's an amazing facility. I encourage anyone to go and, and tour there. Um, but we had Twinsburg students preparing lunch for, you know, 200 people today and, and the presentation on, on that um, organization, what they do. But it's, it's an event I try to go to every year. Um, coming up, uh, we do have opening day for TBL and for uh, our softball league. I am um, throwing out first pitches for, for both. Um, it's a fun event. Um, I haven't been to the softball one. I think this is going to be their first year. Maybe? I don't know. I think so. Um, I've never had a softball kid, so. Um, um, but TBL does a great job um, with their opening day celebration. It's, it's kind of cool for the kids to have, um, it's kind of a carnival atmosphere of just, you know, kicking off the, the season. I know the spring hasn't been great to them, but uh, hopefully this Saturday we'll have a, um, a good turnout and a great day. And then lastly, we've got a couple of big concerts coming up. Um, on the 26th, we have uh, Reggae Fest, which sold out last year. Um, I was out of town. I couldn't go to it, but we'll be attending this year. Um, and then we have um, Sidewalk Prophets, which is a national Christian uh, rock band that will be coming uh, May 17th. So um, two really big events coming up right out of the gate. So I encourage everybody to, to attend that. And, uh, and that's all I have this evening. So, Thank you. department head reports. Thank you. No. I don't know. Are you going to collect one up? Okay. Just quickly, because they can't talk about the uh, health care cost containment committee meeting or the uh, Oswald post renewal meeting. <laughs> I know how you feel. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, but it, actually, in that post renewal meeting, we also talked about a couple other things, like perhaps looking at some of the utilization for our employee assistance program and maybe beefing up that a little bit. And um, they're also going to get us a report on uh, how, how frequently our employees are using some of the medical mutual of the other resources that are available for disease management and, and diet kinds of things and stuff like that. Because there's a lot that goes along with the premiums that we pay, um, a lot of other uh, resources that they could be taking advantage of. So 
they're going to be working on trying to try, try and improve that usage utilization. Um, in the IT department, Windstream has installed fiber at both the fire station two and the new clubhouse. The fiber connection will increase internet speed from 10 megabits, 10 megabits to 100 megabits. Um, the fire department's MDTs, the mobile data terminals, are, have all been configured and will all be installed sometime this week. Um, point, of sale, <coughs> point of sale conversion to peak software is on schedule to start this week. Um, using the peak software over there, they're going to be eliminating the iPads and, um, that are used at the water park and the Berg, and they'll be able to use desktop terminals that, that we use everywhere else. And then t uh, tomorrow morning, Wednesday, 425, the public Wi-Fi will be down for about 15 minutes while they increase um, the speed from 10 to 100 megs on the public Wi-Fi. So. And then the Civil Service Commission met on April 19th. Um, we finalized our rule updates and also set a date for the public hearing on May 17th, <coughs> which is their regularly scheduled meeting. So it will be a public hearing. And then after the public hearing, they'll be able to uh, finally adopt the new rules. Um, at that meeting, the Civil Service Commission also approved a police sergeant's promotional exam to be given sometime in late June or early July, and a police entrance exam for later this summer. That's Thank, it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I think that's any, any other Sarah, reports? Sarah? Uh, yes, okay. I just have a real quick one. Uh, good evening, and thank you all for coming out to the Finance Committee meeting today. I think it was a good discussion, and it was some important information that we had to relay to all of you. Um, our April 2018 income tax receipts total was $2,070,000. Uh, that's up $127,000 compared to last year, 6.58%. And I actually also got a call from Rita that we had a company who normally doesn't pay any net profit taxes, that they paid us a little over $200,000. So that'll show up on next month's. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. And we are up 5.65% in tax revenues for the year. Great. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you. That's all we have. All okay. right. Uh, Mayor. Yes. Has there been any any impact up at Amazon with the uh, the damage they got from the weather? As have they been open? You know, or have they closed for a couple of days? They are. Um, they have reopened, um, not fully. Um, we're looking at. There's a structural engineer that's coming out to take a look at their facility um, to evaluate what happened, prevent it from happening in the future. But um, yeah, they're working through that right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to move on to legislation. First, we have Ordinance 45-2018, an ordinance ex establishing salaries, wages, and employment descriptions for certain employees of the city and updating classifications of employees to be known as the salary ordinance and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 45-2018, place it on its third and final reading, and declare it an emergency. Is there a second? Okay. I made the motion. It was seconded by Mr. Scafidi. Um, any discussion? The reason for the emergency is that we're changing uh, a seasonal uh, job description and range, uh, part-time firefighter, and uh, a, a single position for the uh, golf course that needs to be done so that we have it in place now. And that's, uh, this has gone three readings, even though it's on an emergency, and this has been worked on over the last six weeks. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Emergency clause passes a 7-0. Now I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 45-2018. Is there a second? I made the motion. It was seconded by Mr. Scafidi. Any other discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ordinance 45-2018 passes by a 7-0 vote. Next, we have Ordinance 46-2018. 
An ordinance amending Chapter 182 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Twinsburg, establishing a Municipal Income Tax Ordinance. Okay, this is the third and final reading, so I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 46-2018. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I made the motion. It was seconded by Mr. Steele. Any discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mrs. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Ordinance 46 2018 passes by a 7 0 vote. Next, we have Ordinance 56 2018. An ordinance establishing Chapter 769 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Twinsburg creating donation box regulations. Okay, that's the first reading. And next we have Resolution 57, 2018. A resolution recognizing the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act by declaring April as Fair Housing Month in the City of Twinsburg. I'd like to make a motion to adopt Resolution 57, 2018. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, I made the motion. It was seconded by Ms. McFerrin. Any discussion? Uh, well, I'm really um, adamant about this and happy that we're um, doing this resolution because we've come a long way in fair housing, but there's a long way yet to go. And we're among um, several of the cities that have done a resolution or a proclamation that included Palmer, Palmer Heights, Euclid, Akron, Cleveland, Summit County, and Senator Matt Dolan. So um, I appreciate everyone doing this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mrs. Stauffer? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Pellin? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Ordinance, or I'm sorry, Resolution 57, 2018 passes by a 7-0 vote. That is the end of our legislation. Now we'll move on to unfinished business, new business, and miscellaneous. Mr. Fury? Thank you. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Mr. Steele? I have nothing further. Thank you. Mr. Scafidi? I have nothing further. Thank you. Ms. McFerrin? Well, I didn't really thank everyone for the, um, all the information today at the Finance Committee. It was really well presented so that we could all understand it. So thank, thank you. you to our Finance Director and thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Bellin? Nothing further this evening. Thank you. Mr. Barr? I have nothing further this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor? Nothing for me. Thank you. Mr. Maestros. Nothing. Thank you. Shannon. Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Then I guess I would like to make a motion now to adjourn, adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? A second? I second. made the motion. It was seconded by Mr. Bellin. Shannon, please call the roll. Mrs. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Ms. McFerrin? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Meeting adjourned.